we're very happy um, that uh, Jordi Gualiola followed our invitation. He's the head of the Digestive Di Disease Department of the Hospital Univers Universitari de Bevich in Barcelona, director of the IBD unit of that hospital and associate pro professor um, of medicine at the University of Barcelona. He's the past president of the Catalan Society of Gastroenterology and an expert advisor for the Spanish Working Group for Crohn's and Disease and Ulcerative Colitis and has been a member of the steering committee of this organization. Um, his main research interests uh, of course, is inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, he has 150 peer-reviewed scientific papers, uh, more than 450 communications to Congresses, um, PI, and more than 40 clinical trials. And he's also responsible for the stool bank at the University uh, Hospital of Belvich, and um, PI, of, and is one of the promoters of the recently created stool bank of Catalonia, which is also very important also for us as uh, IVD manufacturers, because in the end, it also becomes more and more important uh, that we interact, um, because there's also regulatory burdens on, uh, on the developers and manufacturers um, really need uh, well-defined, good biobanks, and uh, we're very happy to hear your thoughts and uh, your experience on calprotectin. Mm -hmm. This kind of, uh, introduction. I'm just a, a clinician. Uh, good evening, everyone. I, it's a great pleasure for me to, to be part of this uh, symposia. And in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the value uh, of fecal calprotectin for the, man for the management of IBD. For us, it's, it's extremely important to monitor uh, the disease. And before going any further, let me introduce you to what is inflammatory bowel disease, because probably you're not familiar with. Inflammatory bowel disease are uh, immunomediated diseases that result from, from an abnormal immune response to antigens of the microbiota in uh, genetically predisposed individuals. And here you can see uh, the kind of lesions that IBD produce. In the, in the top of the, of the figure, there are uh, mm, lesions of Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease can affect any part of the, of the intestinal tract, but in general, it affects the terminal ileum and the right colon. And uh, ulcerative colitis affect exclusively the colon, always the rectum, and with uh, variable ex proximal uh, extension. And these lesions produce diarrhea, urgency, incontinence, uh, rectal bleeding, abdominal pain, weight loss, anemia, and uh, affect, severely affects the quality of life of, of these uh, patients. And from a clinical point of view, these are uh, remitting and relapsing diseases. The patients may, 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 may uh, be asymptomatic during long periods of, of, of time and then relapse. But from a, a structural point of view, these are progressive and destructive diseases. And uh, along the course of the disease, the uh, um, structur structural damage accumulates, leading to complications such as stenosis, fistula, that often requires surgery. In fact, most, maybe 60, 70% of our patients with Crohn's disease require um, uh, bowel resection at some point of the, of the disease uh, evolution. And so uh, our aim when treating IBD is to uh, prevent these uh, complications and to modify the natural history of the disease. And, and for doing so, we have to act early. It has been clearly demonstrated that uh, treatments started early during, during the course of the disease are, are much more, much more, much more um, uh, efficacious and can hypothetically uh, modify the natural history of the, of, the, of the disease. And it has been clearly demonstrated that when uh, we achieve, or the patient achieve uh, mucosal healing, when they heal their, their relations, the risk of clinical relapse, the risk of hospitalization, surgery, or cancer is clearly uh, reduced. But we have, we have a problem here. We cannot predict uh, what's happening, what is happening in the bowel by the symptoms. In fact, there is a clear disconnect between the presence of lesions and the presence of symptoms. And we know that uh, from uh, this uh, very important study published more than 30, 30 years ago by, by Modigliani from, from Paris that demonstrate uh, the absence of correlation between a, 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 a clinical score of severity and an endoscopic score of severity. As you can appreciate here, the, the, the regression line is horizontal. So no 
relation at all. In fact, many patients, particularly with Crohn's disease, may have uh, severe lesions without symptoms. And therefore, to, to treat uh, properly these patients, we, we need, we need uh, to objectivize the presence of lesions, and for that we can use endoscopy or, or cross-sectional imaging, but you can imagine that it's not feasible to repeat uh, every three months or every six months this kind of, 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 uh, of tests, so we need biomarkers, and, and calprotectin for that is uh, essential. As Alex uh, mentioned, calprotectin is, uh, uh, comes from neutrophils, and neutrophils are the hallmark of uh, um, bowel inflammation and bowel lesions. Whenever there is a lesion in the bowel, uh, there are neutrophils there, and therefore there is um, calprotectin detectable in the feces. And this is different than other um, biomarkers in blood. For instance, CRP depends on the presence of uh, inflammatory cytokines in the circulation that stimulate the liver to produce CRP, but uh, it not directly uh, uh, um, predict the presence of lesions, where are calprotectin, even though the inflammation is going down, while the lesion is present, calprotectin is uh, detectable. Is that, that's why calprotectin is so important for us to monitor the disease. And we use calprotectin in many different clinical situations. We can use for interdifferential diagnosis, to predict endoscopic activity, to monitor the response to the treatment, and also has a pro prognos pro prognostic uh, value. Regarding the differential diagnosis, in, uh, this I show, there are many, many studies. I show here uh, a study um, performed by prim primary physicians, by GPs in, 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 in UK, um, assessing the value of fecal calprotectin in differentiating IBS, that's chronic symptoms, uh, chronic functional symptoms that suffer probably more than 15 or maybe 10% of the population, so it's very prevalent, from uh, IBS. And uh, the use of calprotectin is uh, aimed to uh, avoid the use of invas inv invasive tests in these patients that don't, don't benefit from, from this test. These authors uh, perform um, this study evaluating the uh, fecal calprotectin care pathway. When some patients come to the primary physician with abdominal symptoms, particularly young, young, young patients, when, when, when cancer is not in the, in the horizon, they perform a fecal calprotectin. When, when fecal calprotectin is low, probably the, the, the likelihood of IBS, of IBD, of inflammatory bowel disease is very, very low and probably these patients don't need a colonoscopy. Whereas when um, calprotectin is high, these uh, patients are referred for, for a colonoscopy, and in between there is uh, some a gray zone uh, where the, the, the test is, is uh, repeated. And doing, though, doing so, these authors could very reliably uh, uh, exclude uh, inflammatory bowel disease. The negative predictive value of this uh, fecal calprotectin uh, pathway is uh, higher than 90%, so it's, it's very, very high, and in fact, the, the NICE, that, that's the, the, the British uh, Agency of uh, Clinical Quality, recommend performing fecal calprotectin as a, as a prior test to decide if, if a patient needs a colonoscopy or, or, or not. But uh, regarding inflammatory bowel disease, we, we use fecal calprotectin to predict the presence of lesions, the presence of ulcers in the, in the, in the bowel without the need of performing or repeating uh, colonoscopy. And several, several studies have shown that uh, fecal calprotectin is a very reliable uh, marker of, um, of the presence of inflammatory lesions in, in the bowel with an area under the, under the curve in most of the studies superior to 90 percent. And particularly the negative predictive value is very high. So if a patient is doing well and the calprotectin is low, probably the patient has healed uh, um, his, his lesions. And uh, fecal calprotectin can also predict histologic activity. Now we are gastroenterologists where we are discussing whether histologic activity or histologic remission uh, should or not be a target in the management of inflammatory bowel disease. And uh, 
fecal calpotectin that reflects the presence of uh, neutrophils in, in the epithelium can also uh, reason reasonably uh, reliably predict the presence of um, histologic activity. In Crohn's disease, is maybe it is also very useful, but uh, maybe the precision of the test is somewhat, somewhat lower. And uh, when, when using fecal calprotectin in Crohn's disease, that I remember that can affect any part of the bowel, we have, take in, we have to take into account where is uh, the inflammation. In patients with uh, colonic Crohn's disease, is a very good uh, marker. But in patients with exclusively ileal uh, Crohn's disease, the correlation with the lesion is much lower, and the concentration of calpotectin is also lower. So the cut point, the cut of that we have to consider is much lower in patients with, uh, with exclusive ileal disease. Even though if we took a very low, a very low level, such as uh, 50%, uh, the negative predictive value is still, is still very, very high. So in, in, in general, it's recommended in, in Crohn's disease to, to, to consider a, a, a cut of 250 as a, to differentiate severe lesions from uh, mild lesions or absence of lesions or uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to, to take a, a lower cut off for ileal, uh, ileal uh, disease. But fecal calprotectin can also provide prognostic information. I, I show you here two recent um, studies from the UK showing that patients with low fecal calprotectin as are, 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 uh, are, are at, at lower risk of uh, progressive disease, a lower risk of developing complications during, during follow-up than patients with a high fecal calprotectin. And several studies have uh, confirmed that uh, fecal calpotectin can predict, in, 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 a, in asymptomatic patients, can predict the um, impending clinical uh, symptoms. Uh, so, uh, and in fact, fecal calpotectin uh, rise several months before clinical relapse. In general, in IBD, first, there is a, a, a may I say, biological activity or biochemical activity then you can detect endoscopic activity and finally the, the patient develops uh, develop symptoms. So, so mo by, by monitoring fecal calprotectin, we can act, uh, at, at least hypothetically, we can uh, um, act before the develop of, 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 of symptoms. And nowadays, we, uh, in managing IBD, we use a, a, a treat to target a strategy. We have several targets depending on the, of the evolution of the disease, but uh, uh, in the early, uh, the, the, the short term target are the uh, uh, clinical, clinical response, the symptomatic response. We want the patient to, to feel better uh, quickly. But in, in the mid term, in the mid -term uh, th that means maybe three, six months, we want the fecal calprotectin, the, uh, uh, the biomarkers to go uh, to normalize, and this probably indicates that the lesions are healing. And in the long term, uh, we want uh, the, 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 the lesions to be completely healed and the quality of life uh, restored. If in the long term, in the mid term, or in, the, in, the, in the short term, this target is not, uh, is not rich, so we have to consider to change the treatment, to intensify the treatment, or to act to do uh, uh, something. And this has, uh, I, I'm not going to, to, uh, to detail this study, but uh, a few years ago, uh, an strategic randomized control trial using um, um, or tailoring treatment according to fecal calprotectin uh, w was compared with tailoring the treatment uh, using exclusively the symptoms, the, what, what, patient, what the patient was suffering, it was clearly demonstrated when, when using, uh, when monitoring with fecal calprotectin, the results in terms of mucosal healing are much uh, better. And finally, as clinicians, uh, when interpreting uh, fecal calprotectin, we have to take into account that, that we are translated a number, uh, a quantitative uh, mm, test into a, a binary decision to scope, not to scope, 
to change treatment or not to change treatment, to intensify treatment or not to intensify treatment. And for uh, doing so properly, we have to take into account two aspects. One is that we can manipulate the sensitivity and specificity of, of the test, changing uh, the cutoff levels. If we are talking, if we're, if we're wanting to predict, if we are wanting to predict uh, uh, endoscopic activity, if we take a very low cutoff level, if we want to maximize sensitivity, we, to, we, we take a, a very low level and sensitivity is high. If we want to be very specific, we took a, a very uh, a more higher uh, level. And also, we have to take into account when interpreting the, the results, the pretest prevalent, prevalence of the uh, situations we are going to predict. In patients who are, are likely to be uh, in, clean, in, in endoscopic remission, that are patients in, 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 um, uh, in, uh, in clinical remission, in patients asymptomatic, in these situations, a low uh, calpotectin probably is a, is a true negative result, and these patients don't, don't need uh, any further studies, don't need an endoscopy. If a patient is, is symptomatic and with a high um, calprotectin, in this population, the presence of lesions is, is more prevalent, and probably this test uh, is a true positive. And we have to uh, think to think twice when there is a disconnect be between these, uh, these two, these two situations. So, when using fecal carpotectin, we have uh, a, a, a rank uh, where we are very uh, confident with the absence of lesion. When it's very high or re relatively high, we are very confident with the presence of lesion. But there is always a gray zone that we, where, where it's better to go for an, 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 an endoscopy. And so, uh, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion is that the, 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 you have to take into account that the paradigm in IBD treatment has shifted for resolving symptoms or for only uh, uh, achieve clinical remission toward uh, mucosal healing. And there is a clear, and this, this is key, there is a clear disconnect between the symptoms and the presence of lesions, and that's why we need uh, biomarkers. And fecal carprotectin is clearly an essential non-invasive tool for disease monitoring nowadays, and um, uh, all over the world we use fecal carprotectin for monitoring our, our, our patients. And in addition to predict the presence of lesions, is useful, uh, is useful in the uh, differential diagnosis and can uh, provide um, prognostic information. And to get the most for, from, the, from using fecal carprotectin clinicians, clinicians must know how to interpret the results of a quantitative fecal calprotectin determination. And, uh, and with this, I would like to thank for, for, your, for your attention, and uh, I will be happy to take questions uh, later. So, thank you. Jordi, thanks a lot for sharing uh, the clinical perspective on biomarkers and in particular calprotectin.